My name is Ola Sandborg. I'm CEO of Leapum, and I've been working with the company for almost a year now. And I have to say it's been a great year. It's a fantastic company and a really, really interesting project that we're working with. And that's what I'm going to present to you right now. So it's all about a new, unique treatment of chronic inflammatory diseases. And this comes from Leapum, which is a sw Swedish biopharmaceutical company founded in 2010. And we went actually public, as you just heard the challenges that there might be. We went public in, in 2021, so we're listed on the NASDAQ first North, the North growth market. But we are right now in clinical stage, uh, and the focus is on, is on chronic inflammatory diseases. And we have a lead candidate. Uh, it's a monoclonal antibody, humanized antibody called SOL116, that's directed to a novel uh, target that's called bile salt stimulated lipase. And this is a really, really interesting that we have a new target that we're going for. Uh, the ones that are supporting us, we have a really, really strong shareholder base. Uh, the major owner is Fleury Invest. They have about 57% of the shares. But also I'm happy to be here in Lund since we have the support from the Crawford Foundation together with the family members, which have another 10%. And also we have Christian von Koenigsegg, uh, the luxury sport car manufacturer that has 8%. And then adding on to this, with the scientists, founders, and the management with 4%. We're almost up to 80% of the ownership of the company. So in total, a little bit more than 1,000 additional shareholders. And even if they vary in size, I would say they are equally important to our success. A little bit about the focus and where we are. We're talking about chronic inflammatory diseases. And of course, you need to have something that's the, the, the core where you're going for. And in our case, we have a, a model indication that's become RA or rheumatoid arthritis. And this is a really, really big indication. We know that there's about 18 million people living with rheumatoid arthritis globally. So it affects a lot of people. And we have to also say that, acknowledge that there's been great contributions to the treatment of these patients coming to the market for the last 10, 15, or even 20 years with the TNF-alpha inhibitors. We have the JAK inhibitors as well that really made a great contribution to these patients. But nevertheless, there's about one third of these patients that still re don't respond to the treatments that are available. So there is an unmet medical need that needs to be, be fulfilled. And that's where we have our opportunity. Also looking for the value of this market, well, it predicted to be around 30 billion USD by 2030. So of course, it's really, really interesting. So there is the blockbuster potential for our product. But as said, the lead indication so far has been rheumatoid arthritis. A little bit about why we believe that this could be something for us. Well, talking about bile salt stimulated lipase, I'm sure that almost none of you in this room have heard about this before. But it's actually something that initially was found in breast milk of breastfeeding women. And it was supposed to be there to help the baby to digest the, the, fit, uh, the, the milk fat uh, and get the nutrition out of, 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 of the, the milk. But as always, you can find it in different areas, and it was later on also found in blood plasma, and later on also seen it was linked to chronic inflammatory diseases. If you look for the graph up on the right side, it's actually, you can see the link between BSS cell levels in plasma towards uh, disease activity, in this case uh, measured by DOS28. And it's clear that when you increase the BSSS level, you could also see that uh, the disease activity is, is increasing. And this is for RA patients. The graph below is actually a preclinical uh, test that we have done. We have induced arthritis in mice. In this case, we have two different types of mice. We have the wild type and we have the knockout mice, where the knockout mice, they don't have BSSL. And that's the lower line, the black line. So you can see that when they're lacking BSSL, they don't develop arthritis, while uh, the wild type mice, they do. So we can see that our antibody that's been developed towards uh, BSSL, and we had that support together with Cylife Lab in Uppsala. It's a really, really uh, well-designed antibody that goes for this innovative new therapeutic strategy. So we believe that there could be a significant benefit while the product taking it uh, in further development. So where we are today, we're focusing on three different areas. One is, of course, the clinical program where we are right now, 
we have the end of the phase one study, and we're also preparing for the next stage, which is, is the phase two, where we're going for a proof of concept in RA. In parallel, we're working with different preclinical uh, activities. One of the most important ones is to get a full understanding about the mode of action. And of course, that's a little bit of a challenge, being new with these targets. We really need to do the job. No one else has done that for us before. So we do this in a collaboration together with the Karolinska Institute. I'm going to show you a little bit more later on about that. But also, we're looking to other indications where our antibody could be useful. And we know that these kind of treatments, they are normally used in many, many different types of uh, inflammations. And then finally, well, going to the market, something that we believe could be possible around 2030. It's not easy for us to do that on our own. We need support, we need the partnership. So that's something that we're also are working with, trying to find the perfect partner for the future. Well, a little bit just to tell you about what we have seen in the phase one study, so just two slides. It's a, it's a study looking into healthy volunteers as well as patients. So the first two parts have been completed, and the last one with the RA patients is, is still in follow-up. But we will have the database lock just before Christmas, and the final results will be available in the end of January. So the first part, single ascending dose in 40 healthy volunteers. Uh, we had an interim report that we published in uh, Q1 this year, but also we completed a multiple dose in uh, May. In that one, we actually had four consecutive doses, one month apart from each other. So in total, treatment over four months with, with, with a multiple dose. And for the final part, the are patients, it's also a single dose that we have there. So for the results, well, as always with the phase one study, most important is safety and tolerability. And in this case, we have to say it's an excellent safety profile that we've been able to see. And especially, we haven't had any serious adverse events among these 56 individuals or patients. Also, we haven't been able to detect any immunogenicity, and this is important because anti-drug antibodies could destroy uh, the success of a product. So we haven't seen it yet. Of course, more needs to be done. Might be too early to say, but anyway, we're off to a really good start here. Also, optimal pharmacokinetics couldn't have been done better. We have a half-life around 20 days, which support, supports that we could go on with this month, monthly dosing. And also we have seen when we're looking for those individuals that showed the BSSL levels that were measurable, that once that we were giving uh, the antibody, it removed almost immediately. So from day four and on, we couldn't measure uh, BSSL levels in those individuals. So really, really good sign of that the antibody is doing its work. And as I said before, well, we're near completion. Complete results will be available by end of January, so I'm really looking forward to that delayed Christmas gift. Just one word about the mode of action and the collaboration with the Karolinska Institute, because this is really, really key to us, besides all the data that we get in from the clinical trial program. So what we're doing there is to try to find out about the sources of BSSL. It's also about the question about the targets, where BSSL could be of interest, and what kind of effects could you see. What we believe is that our band antibody, it can offer a dual mode of action. One is about the immune modulation and the migration of monocytes that we could inhibit. That's the first one. But the second one is also really interesting because it brings it back to the background about bile salt stimulated lipase and this connection to the lipid metabolism modulation that we could also see as a possible way forward. And this has been seen before. For example, the corticosteroids and, uh, and NSAIDs that go via that route. So in our case, if this is true, it would be a true benefit to treating and helping and supporting these patients. So where we are right now? Well, as said, in the end of phase one, we have started the preparations for phase two. And we foresee that we can run a proof of concept study in 2026 to 27, with a start in Q1 2026. Preparations had already started. And what might be most important is that we have a study drug available, and that manufacturing started together with North X Biologics already in April this year. So, what we foresee will be the milestones 
for the coming three years. Well, as you understand where we are right now, it's to be closing uh, the phase one program and to get all that data out, and that will happen in the start of next year. But also that we'll have publications on the mode of action together with adding more information about other indications where the product could be used, and especially be ready to start the phase two study in the start of 2026. So that's all from me for today. Thank you so much, uh, Ola. You got some questions about uh, RA and why are you focusing on it? Are you looking to expand uh, to other indications? Well, I would say that there are maybe two major reasons. The first one is actually it's the background where we started looking into this area with our uh, science that was clearly linked towards rheumatoid arthritis. The other one is that we also could see that there is a clear unmet medical need that could be met. So, uh, two different reasons, but anyway, equally good, I would say. But I'm sure the product could be used for many, many other indications as well, and we need to find out where it could be a real benefit for the patients. Do you have any idea on where and what kind of areas that would be? Well, we have two where we have already seen that we have this link between BSSL and, and uh, disease activity, and that's for psoriatic arthritis and juvenile idiopathic uh, arthritis or child rheumatism. So maybe not that far away from rheumatoid arthritis, but I'm sure we're going to be able to detect and share information about more indications during next year. Mm, already next year, maybe after that late Christmas present, <laughs> as yeah. you were mentioning. Yeah. Um, since you became CEO, what would you mark as the thing you're most proud of in uh, Lipus uh, development? Well, I would say it's about these deliverables that we had during this year. Being able to share results, we've been on track to, to the timeline, and also that the results have been as good as one could expect. Phase one study, it's all about safety tolerability, and I'm really proud about what the product has delivered, and also that has given us the confidence to start all the planning for the phase two program as well. So a really, really great year of deliverables from a strong team and, and good uh, companies and collaborators that we have out there. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a bit more about the mode of action? Is it uh, inhibiting the immune system? Well, the immune system, of course, when it comes to inhibit the, the migration of the monocytes that are closely linked uh, towards uh, the inflammation that, that's known from before. Uh, so that's where we need to understand fully ex what route it goes with, yeah, what kind of receptor is it targeting and what will be the next step. So that's what we're trying to, to clarify together with Karolinska. But the other mode of action, the one that goes through the lipid metabolism, is also really, really key and, and interesting. And for that one, we, we can't really disclose everything right now because we need to have the data to support it, but we're on our way for sure. Okay, I'll finish up with a kind of nice question though. Imagine I'm the investor, like what would excite me, but also what would worry me looking at your company? <laughs> what would excite me, of course, is the it's a, it's a completely new target. If this one works, it's going to be a game changer for this space. And at the same time, that little bit brings it to the risk that I talked about before. It, it's a risky business, but also uh, a, a great uh, result in the other end. So it comes and goes like that. Sure does. Ola Sandberg, everyone from Lipum, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>